so today we're definitely going to dive into figuring out what to do with all of our power and also experimenting a little bit and in getting into mechanism. We can definitely expand off some of these rooms and get ourselves some mechanism going. I think that'd be the way to go. Not only does mechanism have great power storage options, um, it has actually a really good power storage option. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but uh, it also has some really cool ore uh, generation stuff and also some stuff that we actually have to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at something and I'll explain to you why we're gonna jump into mechanism in this pack. Um, so if you look at the ring, or I guess it'd be the uh, extra utilities ring, the angel ring. To upgrade from our ring of the flying squid, which don't get me wrong, is an awesome alternative. Um, we could also go for a jetpack, but I think the angel ring is way better. You have creative flight with this. You also could get creative flight with a supremium armor. That is something you can also do. Um, but this is like your something you want to strive to go towards. And I think in this pack, it's definitely something that was put in that position because the recipe has dramatically been changed. If we notice, we have gold crystals and also osmium crystals, both for mechanism. Um, this ring from the Between Lands also takes a little bit of time to figure out how to get it. it you have to definitely go through the Between Lands and, and go after some of the bosses and stuff. So that's the thing. We already have the Snow Queen trophy. That is no problem at all. We also have a creative modifier. We actually got lucky and got that. So don't want to use it. You want to save it. Um, and a resonant thruster, by that point, you would have near to the best, or you would have like the best jetpack. And uh, I mean, it's not hard to get a resonant thr thruster. However, getting these gold crystals is another story. So I've done these setups in the past, and the chemical crystallizer is one of several machines that you need in order to get to this point. This setup to get these gold crystals is putting it at a point where you're basically getting the max output of ore that you can get when breaking things down. Um, so getting clean gold, uh, gold slurry, well, you have to take gold slurry and put that through a chemical washer, right? Um, just to get gold slurry, you need a chemical dissolution chamber, which takes ore and sulfuric acid, right? And crushes that down um, with a chemical method. And then we need to get sulfuric acid, which requires it's an entire chemical strain uh, of, of its own. Uh, like I said, it's it takes a little bit to get to this point. Um, so several machines in that process, and that would definitely be something to strive for later on. But like I said, it does take a lot to get to this point. Uh, but once you're there, I mean, it kind of runs on its own, right? Um, but that's not the whole reason I want to get into mechanism. Mechanism has a really nice power storage system. Um, but before we do that, let's kind of take a look at this door here. I, I kind of want to put a door here. Um, if you didn't know, um, oh, also, by the way, fixed an issue that some of you guys mentioned. This one right here was set to repeat, so I needed to set it to once to. Um, that was my fault. It's running much better now. This one's actually getting the max like it's supposed to. So it, it, put, it, it pulls in really close to above 12,000 RF per tick, more or less closer to 16, um, it all depends. So anyways, I you guys also mentioned that I'm wasting infinity booster cards by not collecting them, so I'm collecting them. These are really important because we can just throw them in here and it allows me to access my storage cross-dimensionally and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. So um, it gives me unlimited range and all that good stuff. I also went ahead and routed uh, my fluid here with a transfer, a fluid transfer node I'm collecting directly from this tank here, um, which is also being, you know, filled over there. Um, but from all the mobs, it's being it's being collected and also this is going directly into it. So it's pretty efficient in its design. Got a little mob down there. Look at that. I probably need to get some lights in here at some point. Um, but I want a door because these Endermen sometimes will spawn um, little mites. They'll, they will spawn uh, silverfish, not mites. Um, and silverfish, I don't want them running around and bothering me. So if I can have a way to lock them in here in this general room and have a cool door to do that, I think that is a, a pretty awesome idea. So over here we have Malice Doors, which is a wonderful door mod. Um, it's what has given us this huge front door here that looks fantastic. Um, so basically we take this and we can kind of customize our doors and make it out of different materials. So 
over here on movement, I kind of want this to be sliding. Uh, not up and down, though. Sliding four ways. Um, four ways might be kind of cool. Uh, sliding up and down. Um, spinning. Wow, that's vault. Uh, vanishing vortex. We got to do vortex. I don't know what that does, but that's what I want to set it to. Then we have auto close delay. Uh, we could, I guess, set it to automatically close, which I kind of want to do. So maybe set this to six or maybe set this to maybe it's based off a of tick. So 20. So if we leave it for a while, maybe, you know what? I, I'm going to assume that it's ticks maybe, and I'm going to set it to 100, right? For auto close. Um, and then double door. I don't what I don't know what it means by double door, but we'll figure that out. Um, redstone behavior standard sound. Ooh, we can make it sound like anything. Factory door. I kind of want it to be a pneumatic door, right? Um, so that's one thing that we can do. Sound type standard. Um, double door. Like, I guess that would be not true. And then player detection. That would be nice having that turned on. Uh, materials. So uh, door factory. We can create, modify. Okay. Door to modify. I want to actually make a door, I guess. Top block material, bottom block material, or we could modify a, a, a door. So one door that's from here is the high tech door. So maybe you can modify this door. Will it let you? No, it doesn't seem to let me modify. That would be a door that I would love to modify. Huh. Maybe we get into this a little bit more to see. I guess we can just create. So frame, let's do iron blocks. I think that would look good for a frame, right? Um, block, top block material, bottom block material. Hmm. Can you glass? Um, like this glass is really nice. It's kind of see-through. Uh, fused quartz is also a good option for this. We'll kind of see what they look like. And bottom block material. So create door. And there we go. We have a custom door vortex. I hope that it's tall. It probably won't be three tall. Even though that's kind of what I want it to be. That is kind of cool, actually. And it automatically detects when I'm nearby. And then it has that wait timer. Okay. So how do we make it a triple door? That's kind of what I want to, to know. I want to know how to make it a triple door. So I think I've come up with a solution. So what I could do is create separate doors. So turn off the double doors and I will create multiple doors. So instead of doing this, I guess we could do, we can have one door that slides down, which would be the one in the middle. Um, we have rotating and replace, um, rotating up or down, sliding up and down. We'll see, we'll see if these work. <laughs> All of this for a custom door, and I haven't even touched mechanism yet. All right, so slide left. That door. Slide up and down to the center. That m might work once we get it finished. And then slide right. Right? It should detect the player. And we can, of course, close it in. Hmm. It definitely acts kind of weird, doesn't it? That, I mean, I like it. But I wanted it to kind of work like the high-tech door. Notice this one works like this. But I'm not able to get that same effect. Hmm. Bummer. I still like the way this works. Okay, so with that being set in place... I guess what I can do is go ahead and see slabs. I'll just use some stone slabs and kind of put it on the top like this. And then for this block, I'll make it solid. I mean, it doesn't look horrible. And it gets the job done, I think. <laughs> I don't know. It was worth a shot. So there's a few things that we're going to need to do. First, we need a room. Already got that solved. And then uh, we're going to need to work towards this. 
the induction it's it, overall it's called um i think it says it right here the uh induction matrix multi-block energize indu induction matrix so it sounds a little bit crazy and it sounds ridiculous but it's really not that bad and it can store a lot of power now i know a lot of you guys are gonna be saying well why don't you use flux power networks well i mean i can do that i have no problem doing that it's just it's not a great I, like to craft all the items it since they changed how the items can be crafted, we have to go down to bedrock. We have to crush all the items over and over again and with obsidian. It's just, it's yeah, it's just a hassle to do that. So with this, I mean, we can kind of get power stored in large capacities. You can see right here, this one, 400 million RF um, and highly conductive energy capacitor um, capable of storing massive amounts of energy in a single block. Housing is an energized induction matrix to expand the multi-blocks energy storage. So yeah, you can just have a lot of these and get it all done. And is this hard to get? No, not really. Energy tablets are pretty easy to make. And uh, enriched alloy is a thing that we need to make. So we really need to get into making a metallurgic infuser. So that's going to be the thing we need to work, work on. Right? And getting the upgrades for it. Because... Um, the metallurgy confuser, of course, by itself, it's just a regular machine. So, um, and it's going to be pretty slow. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up here. We're just going to place it here for right now. Later on, it'll probably go in our automation section. Um, but we have tons of power for it and we need to start making these. So we're going to need a lot of enriched alloy, which is going to require redstone and iron to make that. And uh, this is just the whole process of getting into mechanism. Right, you have to do this. So redstone and iron. This machine is like the backbone of getting yourself into mechanism. There we go. So we get these going and mechanism makes a lot of noise. It's just a super loud, super loud thing to uh, to mess around with. Uh, but man, this is running so good. I need to uh, get another quarry set up and I need the, the quarry to be mining the, the beneath again. Um, if we're gonna be getting into mechanism, we need a little bit more osmium. And we need to make sure we have enough of that. And as you can see, we do need to work on upgrades. So to get in upgrades with mechanism. So speed usually is one. So we should we should add speed to our list. And I think the other one is efficiency. Is it efficiency? Upgrades. There's just all the upgrades. Yeah, energy upgrade. So we can go ahead and add those. And of course, there's ones to muffle it to make the sound quiet and all that uh all that jazz so those are all things that we can do as you can see we need some osmium dust however so i think what i should probably do if we need osmium dust i guess we better make a uh, crafting recipe for that right so this right here requires osmium dust we need to set up a way not doing it this way that is very wasteful let's set up uh set up to do it for the pulverizer let's change this why why is there for a second i thought my system that's weird. Do I have too many things on this network that allows device missing channel? How? Because we added another <laughs> ME drive? Is that what it did? You know, I'll just take this off the channel for right now and put it on a different channel later. Just to make sure this works. There we go. Now it's working. All right. So uh, that needs pulverized gold. I think, I don't think I have a crafting recipe for pulverized gold. Um, but basically what I want is to have the ingot form pulverized. Same goes for osmium. Want to have the ingot form pulverized. And go ahead and set that up in our system downstairs. Um, we can use any of these. We can use this one, the sag mill. I think I'm gonna go for this one. Just because I think this works a little bit better. This one's a little bit faster, I think, than the sag mill. But either way, should work fairly well. Um, so, osmium, right? Uh, let's go ahead and craft, I don't know, 64 for right now. And start that. And of course, that's going to get everything up and running. So I went ahead and made the upgrades for this bad boy. And to put the upgrades in, it is a pretty slow process. Um, it goes a little bit faster once you put the speed upgrades in. You can see each time it's going to get significantly faster putting, putting the upgrades in. Because overall, it just affects the machine. Um, I also need to throw these in. And we're good to go, right? Just go ahead and throw these in. There we go. 
Um, now this thing is going to run much faster. So let's do iron again, because we are going to need more of these. And it does look like I definitely need to be processing some iron for sure. So 64 iron and redstone. Let's go ahead and get that done. Throw that back in there. And you can see it's going a lot faster. Now we can make this even faster though by doing that. Look how quick that was. Just hitting it with a dime in the bottle. Bam, we're ready to go. And that's probably how I'm going to work on getting everything for these. Um, we have all the resources for them because we need a lot of induction cases to get this to work. And it looks like steel, so I need to get steel made as well. So as I'm working to get everything processed up, I did run into a little bit of something. Some I do need to go ahead and uh, work on a elite control processor, which is taking it a little bit further. Um, really, this setup is just going to utilize the basic. But, um, we will get into probably more advanced stuff later on. But as you can see, it starts to get kind of um, repetitive and things that we would probably want to get set up with um, with like automatic crafting. Now, some of this stuff I am getting set up with automatic crafting, um, but this stuff right now, I, I'm just kind of going, uh, just going to stick to making it. So um, what I need is to grab this. Let's go ahead and flick this back on because um, I need to grind up some diamonds and that is going to go towards this. So if I put the diamonds in there, that's going to process and we're going to get ourselves some reinforced alloy. Um, and yeah, this will be really quick when I do this. There we go, 16 of those. It's pretty much one to one uh, for all these recipes. And that is going to get us um, set up with induction ports. Now we only need two of them. So really this is like nothing. We do need the induction casings, but to make the uh, the elite, it's rather simple. Um, so let's take a look here. So the basic control circuits, that's just osmium done the same way as iron. And that will get us these. Um, and I think we only need a couple of them because we only need two elites. So there we go. Look at that. Uh, pretty simple. Pretty simple as far as elites go. Everything else is uh, very simple. We need basic control circuits for these. And we also need lithium dust, which comes from nuclear craft. So we already have that as well. And I think we're just about ready to craft this. I'm about to throw the auto crafts in and uh, get them thrown inside of our auto crafting station over here and just set this thing to craft. I mean, that's... Uh, basically it so I mean we're, we're just about ready to go so uh, when I build this machine it's gonna have a three by three interior and what we need is some providers and we also need ourselves um, cells these cells are gonna be the basis of the amount of storage that we have total in our cell and the induction pro uh, provider is going to be the amount that can be taken out and put in um, so as you can see, the output rate is 25,000 RF per tick, uh, just with one. They do stack though. So if we have about three of these or so in there, um, we could get a bit more. And we'll talk about um, how we need these actually to connect because they actually do need to be connected to your induction boards on the inside. So this is gonna be a five by five structure, hollow on the inside, and it's gonna be filled with inductions, uh, a, a couple of induction providers, and I would say three is your minimum. And uh, you're also going to need induction cells. You can probably get away with two actually now that I think about it. But for right now, we're gonna go with um, three because that should suit. And then the rest of the space, we're gonna fill with induction cells. So we're about to do this. This is 98 of the induction casings. We literally almost have everything we need for the uh, this whole setup. I think I'm gonna craft a couple more after this. Uh, because I do need to make these. So we need to make sure we have exactly 98. Still, let me uh, do the auto craft for this. Um, do 10 more, just to make sure. Yes, and that puts us over the amount. There we go. We actually only needed two of these. I kind of overdid it there, didn't I? Um, so yeah, we need 98 of these to make this uh this cube and uh, i guess what better place to do it than this room down here which is where our power is going to go and this is going to become our mass storage so this thing is huge this thing is is quite large and it is going to take up most of this floor um so i will go ahead and do this to place it down one because going up this is one two three four five tall 
so I don't want it touching the ceiling. Um, even though, you know what? We could have it just touching the ceiling. It's one, two, three, four, five tall. You know what? I might as well just do that. Let's go ahead and grab our wand. Let's not place the block. Let's, uh, let's actually make that do that. Let's actually make it as tall as the ceiling. And we'll make this room completely set up for this. And I'm wondering, why am I hearing the mechanism noise? Even though the machine's not running. I wonder if that's a bug from me messing around with all the other stuff. Alright, so uh, we can do this pretty quickly with the wand. Um, I am going to leave uh, an empty spot here so I can jump and get access into this. And then that, of course, doesn't need to be there. There we go. And all the way up to the top. There we go. And fill this in. Now, I do have all the other bits ready to go. Um, and what I want to do is I want to have an input and output here. We need two. And this is where the induction ports are going to go. So induction port here, induction port there. And we should be just about ready to go. Let's grab all 24 inductions. I think I counted right. Hopefully I did. And this is going to, to, to all work out. So our induction providers are going to go right here. And like I said, I want them to connect to these two induction ports. They do need to be connected to that from what I know. Um, and then let's go ahead and fill the rest with cells. And yeah, each one of these cells hold, look at that amount, 400 million RF a piece. And we should be able to fill the rest of this up with them. And then when we enclose this, we should see some redstone particles, hopefully. Did I not see any redstone particles? I don't know if it uh, activated the multi. I guess the multi block did activate because we can. Uh, we should be able to see inside here how much we have four or nine point six billion worth of storage. Um, it's not telling me max. Let's go to statistics. Okay, so we can send a maximum of seventy six thousand RF per tick and pull out a maximum of seventy six thousand RF per tick which is more than your normal stuff. Um, so like this block over here will only let you pull out 25 or 20, 25,000 RF per tick. So um, if we ever wanted to upgrade that, we could easily upgrade it. Now, how do we need to set up our flux networks? Because really at this point, we now need two separate flux networks. If we're going to be letting this work the way it is, we need an input network and an outgoing network, right? So we need a plug or some plugs. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Plugs and looks like I need a couple more of these. And I do have some points. Um, and to set this up, this is how you're going to have to kind of think about power. And I'm going to change the name of this from main. We go to uh, network settings, or is it network statistics, network settings, and this is going to be called input public. And we're going to set it to green because that's what I want. This is the input network. And then we're going to set this with a point that is going to be green. That is going to be going in and that's the input network. And uh, we can disable the limit. This is going to be filling this up with power, right? Over here, we need a plug, and this is going to be red. And I'm going to create a new network, and it's going to be called output. And this is going to be a red network. Um, and it's going to be public because I'm, you know, playing on a single player world. And this is going to change how all of our connections are set up. Um, and we need to go ahead and hit create, and then make sure we select this and disable that and this should now be able to pull power out and uh, we'll be able to see our power systems working a little bit better once we get this going um so what all uses power and where is our power being stored so right here this network is actually sending power into our main storage so this actually is correct this needs to be set correctly um, we also need to change whatever is powering this system that also needs to be configured. All the stuff that is powering these guys, um, I think is over here. 
whatever is connected to it. I think this is all still running off the main system. This isn't even running off of anything else. But there definitely is a point, or yeah, there's a point down here somewhere. Right here. This needs to be changed to the output network. Right? That's going to start pulling power a little bit differently. Man, this is, this is really awesome because this is a really, really nice power storage system uh, that we're using. And it stores a lot of power. And it's a, I think it's a bit cheaper than going the uh, the method uh, actually utilizing flux networks. Um, anything else using a point, we probably need to figure out. And we can do that by actually accessing one of the points. Um, so finding any of these, such as actually one that's on the network, going into the network. Where is it at? It's right here. The network connections. Actually, we probably need to go on this one. Find all the the, uh, the points here. So, all these different flux points that are all over the place, it looks like. We need to find out where they're at and change them. Can we change them from here? We can't change them from here. We can change the transfer limit and stuff like that, but we need to actually find where these are all located and get them all transferred over. So, I totally derped and I was like, oh, where are these all at? Oh, of course. They're out here. So yeah, the, these all need to be changed. And then we'll have an, an idea of how much power we're actually pulling out. Because I mean, with all these, I should be using the wand. That'd probably make things a little bit nicer, wouldn't it? Um, I think it's in my bag. My flux configurator. Copy, paste. Look how easy that is. Bam. And uh, with all those changed, like I said, we should be able to see now um, how well this is going. Is this being wirelessly powered? I think it is. So one final thing that I almost forgot, you do need a configurator to change this to output mode. Uh, that way it will actually start outputting. Now we can start seeing that we are outputting power and we can see that, uh, yeah, it doesn't, we're not outputting that much power, but I did end up finding most of our nodes from what I know. Most of our nodes are ready to go and have already been transferred over, including all the ones in our automation room. But yeah, this was a big factor. You do need to use the configurator in order to transfer this. This is basically like the, the wrench for mechanism. Um, but yeah, we also have some quests. So might as well complete those real quick. And we're getting, I mean, we've got a lot of these quests really worked in here. Yeah, you can see that it's a big part. I'm surprised that there isn't, there wasn't a quest line, uh, that I know of that was regarding this power storage. Cause this is a, like probably one of the best power storages in the game. I mean, this has to be, I mean, this is definitely one of the best power storage methods. I mean, we're, we're about to store 9.6 billion RF and we really didn't even use that many resources for it. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and learned something amazing. If you did, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and also click that subscribe button. If you haven't already joined the crew, I highly recommend doing so. So guys, I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.